I love this time in the morning. Not very good for filming though. Figaro was sunk on the 26th of January 1918 off the TLs, south coast of Guernsey. She was a French cargo steamer of 559 tonnes, built in 1907 by Richard Williamson and son, Wokington. She was originally called the Verida from 1907 to 1912. In 1912 she was sold to La Vasseur et Fils de Rouen. In 1917 it was sold again and the owners were Société d'Importation de nord eu de l'Est. Her cargo on this occasion was coal, with a crew of 17 heading from Brest to Rouen. She was at one time 194.5 feet long, 26.6 feet wide and 10.9 feet deep. Her hull was made out of steel. As with many, many other shipwrecks in Guernsey, this was extensively salvaged. slowly coming up towards the propeller. The stern of the ship had slipped away. I can't help but to relive the chief engineer's report when it was sunk. He was in the engine room and the force had threw him down. He stopped the engines but the Figaro had already begun to list the port and he ran on deck but all there was to see was a ripple of water. He was convinced it was either a mine or submarine. It was not a rock. The first officers stated that about 3.55 a.m. I was on the bridge when the explosion took place, which was very much disturbed the water and caused a big splash. There was no rock there. I'm sure it was a mine or torpedo, but saw no submarine or anything. The Figaro began to heel over to port and went down after 10 minutes. Here we can see the engine with the cylinder. And this large object is the boiler. 
This shipwreck is surrounded on the port side and the stern by reef. There is reef to the right hand side or the starboard side, but not as much. It's laying down into deep water with the bow around about 45 meters and the stern around 38. The bell runs out that way. The Figaro was built with a marine water tank boiler. She is a high pressure boiler and from here looks like she's a four furnace boiler. She's about 16 feet wide and I'm guessing about 150 to 180 pounds of working pressure. The starboard side of the ship has fallen away. She lays across the tide, so the tides go east to west on the south coast of Guernsey, or west to east. Although I've only been nine minutes in my dive, I've already clocked up seven minutes deco. This is all that's left of her cargo, a few lumps of coal. As I swim out over the starboard side of the ship, you can see its rivet construction. It's already time I started heading back to the shop line as I swim over the starboard side of the ship. Here you can see the donkey boiler. This would have been used for making steam while it's in the harbour to use with its winches and its derrick cranes and also hot water to the galley. Let's just have a quick look at this while we're here. Check out the size of these nuts. Absolutely huge. Looks like it's full of silt and also a shanker. Look at the size of these knots. These would have held the boiler together. These would run from end to end. These small tubes are called fire tubes and on the outside of these tubes there would have been a box called the smoke box. Wonder what's inside this boiler? Let's take a look. These are looking at the fire tubes from the inside. I would add my head in the hot water at the moment and this square at the end is the end of the combustion chamber. The hot smoke will come up and through these tubes and then back out the smoke box. The reason for tubes is it would have greatly increased the surface area. We're now on the back of the boiler. Notice there's no tubes on this side. This large lump is the engine. It's a triple expansion steam engine. It's a triple because it has three cylinders, a high pressure, a medium pressure, and a low pressure. Here you can see some of the steam pipe with a stopcock still attached. little bits you see on top would have been pressure release valves. It's amazing how this has got a large hole in the side. This could have been from the cold water hitting it when it was still hot and exploding. Here you can see at the back of the combustion chamber. This is where the hot air would have come up and then through the tubes. 
the larger tubes on the top are the stays. This would have held the pressure on the flat areas of the boiler at either end where there would have been the most pressure. There would be an access hatch also on top of this boiler to check inside for maintenance and corrosion. Here you can see the high pressure, the medium pressure and also the low pressure cylinders. This engine has been stripped of all the main copper components. Just checking my air, 110 bar, that's just under half a tank. Now I need to check my time to surface, 12 minutes. Okay, I could deal with that, I've got enough air for that, so let's carry on. Now we're heading over to the prop shaft. Here yeah, you can see it, running all the way down to the propeller, which is still in place. This obviously isn't made out of bronze, otherwise it would have gone a long time ago. There is also a spare propeller on a bulkhead, right up the bell. These are frost bearings. This would have been the underside of the boat. Almost a kill. Here we have a humongous crankshaft. These are the big end bearings and the push rods which go up to the engine. And here we have a push rod. You can tell the pistons right at the top of the cylinder. It's a shame this thing wasn't still standing up because they look like a work of art. The second most important person on the boat would have had this as his pride and joy, which would have been the chief engineer. The vessel is laying down a reef, it's also slightly to starboard, probably 20 degrees. It really is time we started to leave. You can tell I'm in a real hurry to leave. This is a winch that would have been right at the stern. I've tied into the steering quadrant. I love this wreck, but it's a really awkward one. With it being at 40 meters, it's not deep enough to go full tech mode and it's not shallow enough to use a normal gear. But anyway, I better head back up the reef. Just gotta collect my strobe and then I work my way back up the line very slowly. Just as I leave, a large shoal of Pollock return back to the shipwreck. I have 14 minutes total time to get back to the surface. 
I'm also swapped on to 40% O2 to help me in my decompression. I've got 60 bar left, that should be enough. Here's Matt down onto the Figaro. I've got to say, the viz and light levels are amazing. That's the best I've seen it. And I've had all the slack out of it. So, Matt's having to go down and dive in tide. So, sunk in January 1918. Sunk here, you can see how close it is to land. It should have been sunk three and a half miles southwesterly of Hanwha Lighthouse. So, that's west, that's south, that's north, and that's east. So, by the looks of it, someone didn't tell the truth when it had sunk, or where it had sunk. And they reckon it's torpedoed. Captain said he uh, had a torpedo under the boiler. Seen the big hole in the boiler. I filmed, put my camera inside. So there's a hole both sides. These boilers are inch and three quarter thick iron when they're first made. So you can see how much is, is deteriorated. It's rotted away. Some of them, um, some of the holes you get in there are uh, explosion, explosives holes. So basically when cold water hits a hot, hot boiler, you can imagine what happens. There's a phase change from a solid, or from a liquid to a gas really, and it explodes. That's why there's big holes in them. Well, that was an amazing dive. I love that. That's the first one of the day. So, as usual, you do your deep one first. And that was 43, I think I've seen in that one. Uh, it does go deeper, it heads off down this way and uh, down towards the bow. There's a spare propeller on the bulkhead and uh, a chain locker with the chain lockers disintegrated and now it's just a, a big cube of uh, chain rusted together. I don't know if you can see that, well the frame rates are the same as the screen but you can see that, look, there's bubbles coming up from the seabed. Well, it looks like Matt's uh, on tide from the Figaro now because there's the wreck which is in front of us and the tide is starting to run to the east now so it comes down here and around here so you can see the buffs here so it was over there and it's slowly working its way that way so it drift off this way and then I'll pick them up and on to the next shipwreck don't know what it's going to be this is a typical dive Guernsey day out, we just don't know what we're doing. We knew we were going to do the Figaro, we needed to plan that a little bit. It's a deep, um, fairly serious wreck to be honest, and you need the right gear. So, I bought my twin sevens today. So that, that gear is done, that tank is well and truly empty. Uh, on to the next gear now. So I'm going to start setting my stuff up. And we're going to head up that way and then go up the west coast. We might even have a look at the uh, Prosperity engine again. We'll see how we go. Don't know if you can see that, the old German watchtower up there. That's how good the viz is. You can see Matt, just there, hanging on.